Okay. So, uh, for today, we'll be starting with the early biological theory. So, when we say biological theories, may kinalaman ito sa physical na katawan ng isang tao. So, pinapaliwanag ng mga theories na to kung papaano naka, nakakapag-commit o kung bakit nakakapag-commit ng crime ang mga uh, tao base sa kanilang physical na kaanyuan. Okay. Okay. So, we have mens sana in corpore sano, a healthy mind in a healthy body. So, early biological theories view criminal behavior as the result of a defect in the individual. Kaya daw nakaka, o kaya daw nagiging kriminal lang isang tao dahil may mali sa kanya. So, this defect can be biological or genetic in nature and serves to separate the criminal from the law-abiding citizen. Contemporary biological theories concentrate more on variations in genetic and other biological factors in interaction with the environment and are less likely to refer to biological defects or abnormalities. So, uh, yun nga. Mas nagbibigay ng focus ang mga biological theories on the physical aspects of a person as in literal itsura size ng katawan kung payat ka mataba ka anong uring kriminal ka okay so uh, this is also part or a part of this all is also the genetics of a person namana niya kaya ang kanyang pagiging kriminal yun okay so, punishment serves a different goal in biological theories. While punishment may be appropriate to protect society, it will not have a deterrent effect. Ang isa kasi sa dahilan kung bakit tayo nagbibigay ng punishment is for other people not to copy that certain behavior or that illegal or wrongful behavior para maging sample siya. But in biological theories, hindi siya ganun. Hindi nila pinapaliwanag na ganun dahil nga may problem sa katawan at yung problem na yun, hindi naman siya uh, na ipapasa maliban kung kamag-anak ka, hindi siya nagiging deterrent para sa ibang tao. Hindi niya, hindi sinasabi ng biological theories na mapipigilan ang pag-commit ng crime uh, sa ganitong mga pagpapaliwanag. So because there is an inherent defect or abnormality within the individual, when you say inherent, nama na niya, or taglay na niya, pagkapanganak pa lang sa kanya, deterrence or the threat of punishment will not affect behavior. So, hindi sila takot na makakumit ng crime. Hindi sila takot na baka mahuli sila. Kasi nga, yung mga katangian nila, inborn, or na uh, taglay na talaga nila. Kaya kahit anong gawin mo, hindi mo na sila ma mababago. Kumbaga. So, although early biological theories lacked validity, they were among the first to use the scientific method. Because basically, theories before weren't uh, all proven through research. But biological theories were created through or by the use of scientific methods. So the process of measuring body parts, shapes, and sizes, although flawed, represented a dramatic shift from a from the philosophical approach offered by the classical school. Uh, later, it will discuss natin kung ano yung classical school na yan. Pero dito muna tayo. Biological theories trace back to Lombroso, Cesar Lombroso, the father of modern criminology. Kaya siya tinawag na modern. Uh, dahil gumamit siya ng scientific method sa kanyang pagpapaliwanag o sa kanyang pagbuo ng theory. And vary in the amount of determinism built in. Atavistic man or the born criminal was always going to be at odds with civilized society. More modern biological theories seek to establish a link between things like IQ, testosterone, and criminality. While they share a biological link, 
modern theories understand that the influences of choice and the larger society also play a role in the crime dynamic. Sa panahon daw ngayon, mas hindi na talaga naka-focus sa kumbaga, hindi na lang biology ang focus ng theories dahil meron na ring role ayan no uh, influences of choice dahil ang tao marunong pumili nakakapili ang tao ng gagawin niya at ng hindi niya gagawin kaya nakaka-influensya yon sa kung paano o kung bakit nakagagawa ng krimen ng mga tao. And modern biological theory, sinasabi dito, na included na rin yun regarding IQ. Uh, baka mababa ang IQ niya, kaya hindi niya maintindihan na krimen pala yung ginagawa niya. Or sobrang talino niya, akala niya, makakatakas na siya kung ano man ang uh, krimen na ginawa niya. Yan, testosterone is also part. Okay. If biological theories are correct, then society is limited in its responses to offenders. There are five basic responses. First, we could try to fix the offender. Gagamutin natin siya. Ang offender kasi, ang tingin natin sa kanila ay mga taong may sakit. So, uh, when we see them as people who are sick, then we would be able to fix the offender. Yun yung number one. Then, this may be accomplished through medication, treatment, or therapy. Natin siya. Second, we could lock the offender. We could lock the offender up and keep him or her physically separated from larger society. I kukulong natin siya para hindi na siya maka magkaroon ng chance na may makahalubilo pang iba. Mahawa pa sa ugali niya. Okay? Third, we could sterilize the offender. Uh, lilinisin. This would keep individuals from passing along defective genes to future generations. Hindi daw siya makakapag-produce ng offspring na may nataglay din kung ano yung mga criminal traits niya. Four, we could deport or banish the offender. Paalisin na lang dito sa lugar natin para sa ibang lugar na lang siya maghanik ng lagim. Pero dito hindi na. Finally, we could choose to kill the offender. Patayin na lang daw. If crime is truly biologically determined, these options or close de derivatives of these options would prove more useful than any punishment designed to remove the pleasure from a criminal act. Okay, trait theory. It is based on the premise that crime is committed because criminals have either mental or physical defects. The theories are composed of biological trait theory. That's the first one. This supposes that biochemical, genetic, and neurophysiologic neuro conditions causes crime. So, my problem sa loob ng katawan. Kaya nagiging criminal ang isang tao. And psychological trait theory which assumes that mental issues are the causation of crime. Public policies developed from these theories include primary prevention programs, which focus on the treatment of individual personal issues and defects before they display themselves through criminal activities, and secondary prevention programs, which focus on psychological therapy to prevent people from violating laws, and tertiary programs, which focus on helping criminals make their way back to operating under normal social rules and conventions. Because uh, when a criminal or being a criminal, you are not functioning well. Hindi ka gumagana robot yard. Hindi ka gumagalaw ng ayon sa kung papaano yung dapat nagalaw mo talaga in society. Now, if we are able to uh, give them programs, give them therapy para maayos nila yung sarili nila, pwede na silang ibalik sa kung saan sila nang galing. Maaayos na kasi sila. It is through these policies that programs 
such as mental health associations, family therapy groups, and substance abuse clinics have been opened. Kaya uh, malaking factor na merong mga rehabilitation centers, merong mga psychologists na nagkakandak ng ganyan, family therapy. Kasi um, a factor for being or for committing crimes is you have family problems, you aren't adapt, you aren't able to adapt. Kung paano kumikilos yung pamilya mo or you are considered to be a disappointment na pinanindigan mo na lang. Sige, total disappointment naman ako. Tuloy-tuloy ko na maging criminal na ako. So, depende. Okay. Uh, it is through these policies that rehabilitation programs such as halfway houses, sinabing halfway houses, uh, ito ay pag malapit ka ng lumaya sa kulungan at kapag malapit ka ng ipasok sa kulungan, dun muna sila sa halfway houses. Sa Pilipinas, I'm not, I don't think na meron tayo niya kasi diretso na yan sa kulungan or sa uh, rehabilitation centers. Then meron ding anger management classes. Other programs have been implemented throughout our criminal justice system spanning the entire course of criminal development from preventing children from turning to crime in the first place. The rehabilitation of criminals already incarcerated in our prisons and jails. Yun yung isa sa ginagawa ng mga PDL, persons deprived of liberty. They are rehabilitated. Kasi nga, again, katulad ng nabanggit natin kanina, those criminals are considered to be sick people and what we do to sick people is we treat them. Ayun. Okay. Fishonomy. It is the study of the relationship between the facial features and human conduct of a person in relation to his crime. So, tandaan nyo na, fishonomy, facial features. Kaya kung pangit ka, kriminal ka talaga. Okay? So, human conduct of a person in relation to his crime. We have Johan Kaspar Lavater. He is, he was a Swiss theologian who believed that people's true characters and inclinations could be read from their facial features. So, kung ano nga yung itsura mo, masasabi na niya kung ano yung true characteristic mo. He also stated that the way to observe the character of person is by observation of his physical as appearance, titignan nga yung itsura mo, and measurement of the outward appearance. Di lang titignan, susukatin pa. Hmm, lapad naman ng noon ito. Criminal to. <laughs> then we have Sandela Porta. Ital he was an Italian physician who founded the School of Human Economy, the study of facial features and their relation to human behavior. The study of judging a person's character from facial features to determine whether the shape of the ears, nose, and eyes and the distances between them were associated with antisocial behavior. Okay. Balik tayo sa definition ng physiognomy. It is the study of a person's physical characteristics, especially their face, to try and determine things about their personality. Although it was widely discredited during the 20th century, during the 18th and 19th centuries, it was a legitimate and respected science. Many hope that this study of faces could be used to pinpoint a criminal look, which could help police identify criminals, perhaps even before they committed a crime. Yun, parang tinignan ka pa lang ng police. Ay, pangit. Criminal to. Arestuhin ko nga. Ganun ang dating. Sabi, many hope that this study of faces could be used to pin Talagang may mga iturang kriminal, mga iturang magnanaho, mga iturang scammer, eh, no? Yun yung attempt nila in fishonomy. Fishonomy also had a direct link to the development and use of mugshots in the late 19th century. Sir, Sir Francis Galton, who is best known for his innovations in the science of fingerprinting, studied the potential of mugshots to reveal the look 
of criminality. He layered mugshots of certain types of criminals such as smugglers, thieves, arsonists, and others into composite photographs. He hoped that by combining their faces, he would be able to identify facial features that indicated criminal tendencies. Matutuk- may, yun lang nga, matutukoy mo na pag guro matangos ilong mo tas medyo pogi ka, pero ito, uh, pero bural ka. <laughs> pero bural ka. Ay, arsonist to. Ganun. Kawawa naman yung mga pangit, no? Nakakalungkot. <laughs> Ayun. He hope na pag pinagsama-sama nga daw, kunyari, nakakuha na sila ng mga picture, ng mga arsonist. So, makikita na nila, ah, ganito ang mga facial features ng mga arsonist. Then, sa mga susunod pa na kreo, matutukoy na nila. Ah, ganyan, kabuka niya yung mga nandoon na picture. Grabe, arsonist to. Ganun. Oo. Ang fear talaga mundo, lalo kung pangit ka. Kaya nga ako, sobrang swerte ko eh. Hindi ko naranasan. Yan. Johann Kaspar Lavater was a Swiss, Swiss poet and physiognomist who published Physiognomisch Fragmentezer. Hindi ko alam ko tama yung pronunciation ko ha, pero alamin nyo na lang yung spelling. Before the wrong, there <laughs> men's chen can miss. I'm sure mali yung pagkakabasa ko. Uh, patawan. Anyway. So in this popular book, he claimed that a person's facial characteristics reflected their temperament or character. Yan, pag, pag singkit ka, tapos pango ay mabait. Pag medyo uh, ano yun? Yung labi mo. I forgot the term. Ayan. Pag labi mo malaki, tapos malaki din mata mo. butas ng ilong mo, malaki din, ay, ano to, uh, masayahing tao. <laughs> Pag malaki butas ng ilong, masayahing tao yun. Ayun. Mabasa nga yung libro ni Lavater. <laughs> Building on this idea, 19th century criminologists like Cesar Lombroso even identified some specific characteristics which might indicate criminal tendencies such as Sugar loaf shaped skulls, pointy heads, pag patulis daw yung ulo mo, heavy jaws, pag ang, ang pangapanga mo, and then receding brows, <laughs> sa salubong, and scanty beard. Kapag ganyan ang itsura mo, kriminal ka. Ganyan, actually, ganyan din kasi yung ginawa ni Cesar Lobroso, nagpunta siya sa isang prison, tapos, chinek niya yung mga bangkay, Basta may mga tinignan siya doon at nakita niya na pare-parehas nga yung mga characteristics ng mga criminals na yun. Kaya uh, nasabi na siya nga ang father of modern criminology dahil gumamit siya ng scientific method. Yung nga nung inobserve niya yung mga tao. Okay, we have the four temperaments uh, according to Sir Lavater. So Lavater felt that a person's character or temperament was reflected in their general facial features. At the heart of this typology is ancient medical concept, humorism. Humors here refer to bodily fluids that are present within one's body. Different, different people have different proportions of these fluids. The predominance of one fluid defines one's temperament and psychological type. Here are the four temperaments and their predominant humors. So sanguine is blood. Phlegmatic is phlegm. phlegm. Choleric is yellow bile. And melancholic is black bile. Doon muna tayo sa sanguine personality type. So people with sanguine personality type tend to be lively, optimistic, buoyant, and carefree. Carefree, so mga masiyahing tao. They love adventure and have a high risk tolerance. Typically, sanguine people are very poor at tolerating boredom 
So, hindi sila mapakali. And will seek variety and entertainment. Needless to say, this trait may sometimes negatively affect their romantic relationships because this temperament is prone to pleasure-seeking behaviors na aapektohan yung kanyang love life dahil madali siyang mabore at lagi niyang gustong nakakahanap ng mga bagay na nagpapasaya sa kanya. Many people with sanguine personality are likely to struggle with addictions. Their constant cravings may lead to overeating and weight problems. Ayan, mga mga hilig sa mukbang. Then we have phlegmatic personality type. Someone with phlegmatic personality type is usually a people person. Uh, very sociable siya. They seek interpersonal harmony and close relationships. Uh, phlegmatic people are loyal spouses and loving parents. They preserve their relationships with old friends, distant family members, and neighbors. People with phlegmatic temperament tend to avoid conflicts and always try to mediate be between others to restore peace and harmony. Siya yung... Uh, Kapag may nag-aaway, siya yung mahilig mag-ayos. At lagi siyang nag... Sabi na natin sa modern times, no? siya yung mga mapag-chat. Madalas mga musta. Hindi naman para mangutang, pero nangangamusta lang. Old friends, mga relatives nila na medyo malayo na. Ayan. Then we have choleric personality type. Someone with pure choleric temperament is usually a goal-oriented person. People with choleric Personality type are very savvy, analytical, and logical. Extremely practical and straightforward. Choleric people aren't necessarily very good companions or particularly social. They dislike small talk and enjoy deep and meaningful conversations. Ayaw niya yung mga the small talk. Main ka na. Nugawa mo. Ayaw niya yung mga ganon. So they would rather be alone than in company of shallow, superficial people. Parang mas gusto niya nalang mag-isa kaysa walang kwenta yung kausap niya. Ideally, they want to spend time with people who have similar professional interests. Feeling ko, oh, ganito ako. Okay, melancholic personality type. People with melancholic personality type love traditions. Women cook for men. Men open doors for women. They love their families and friends. And unlike sanguine temperament, do not look for novelty and adventure. Gusto nila yung chill lang. Lang silang magago, ginagawa masyado. In fact, they avoid it at all costs. Someone with melancholic temperament is very unlikely to marry a foreigner or leave their homeland for another country because they, they love the comfort that they have in their home. Ayun. Phrenology or craniology. So we have Franz Joseph Gall. So phrenology or craniology is the study of external formation of the skull, as in kung ano ang shape ng skull mo, that indicates the conformation, conformation of the brain and the development of its various parts in relation to the behavior of the criminal. This is the study of the external formation of the skull that indicates the formation of the brain. So kung ano kasi yung shape ng skull mo, uh, yun din daw ang nagiging shape ng brain mo. And the development of its various parts in relation to the behavior of the criminal. Then we have phrenology. It is a process that involves observing and or feeling the skull to determine an individual psychological attributes. Tinitignan, kinakapa yung bungo mo. Para malaman kung ano yung mga psychological attributes mo o yung mga katangian mo. Franz Joseph Gall believed that the brain was made up of 27 individual organs that determined personality. The first 19 of these organs, he believed to exist in other animal species. Meron din daw yung mga hayop. Kaya may similarity tayo sa mga hayop. Phrenologists would run their fingertips and palms over the skulls of their patients to feel for enlargements or indentations. Yun nga, hipo-hipo in yung, yung bungo mo. 
kung may mga unusual na buhol, may mga unusual na enlargement sa uh, ulo mo. The phrenologist would often take measurements with a tape measure of the overall head size and more rarely employ a craniometer, a special version of a caliper. In general, instruments to measure sizes of cranium continued to be used after the mainstream phrenology had ended. The phrenologist put emphasis on using drawings of individuals with particular traits to determine the character of the person and thus many phrenology books show pictures of subjects from absolute of subject from absolute and relative sizes of the skull. The phrenologist would assess the character and temperament of the Patient. Charles Buckman Goring as a phrenologist. So he also studied phrenology or cranial, which deals with the study of the external formation of the skull, indicating the formation of the brain and the development of its various parts, which is directly related to the behavior of the criminal. He posits that criminal characteristics were inherited. Namama na daw ang mga uh, criminal characteristics, kung papaanong namamana rin ang physical characteristics. And recommended that people with such characteristics should not be allowed to reproduce. Hindi daw pwede magkaanak yung mga may ganung katangian. People with epilepsy, insanity, and feeble-mindedness were among those who should not be allowed to have children. Okay. 